Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back. Today we're playing a little bit more Convoy, so let's get started. This game's pretty interesting, and we're going to jump right in so we can see what's going on. Now today we are going to be using a variety of pirate-themed ships, or raider-themed ships I suppose is more accurate. We are going to be using a nice uh, themed collection of uh, escort vehicles and convoy vehicles. We'll rename this sucker here The Calamity. There we go. That's not a capital T, though, is it? There we go. Much more like it. And we're going to rename our allied ships appropriately as well. You can be Hurricane. There you go. And you, Unit 2, are going to be Earthquake. So, what's the interesting thing about these ships? Well, there are a couple. For one thing, this ship starts out with only a ramming type weapon, a chainsaw. So that means that gives us a very clear direction on what that thing should be doing. And its little brother over here starts out with a decent heavy machine gun, which is a pretty solid weapon. They both come with pretty surprisingly good evasion for starting vehicles, with 40% on the lighter vehicle and 30 on the heavy. They both have decent health at 800 and 1,100, and decent armor as well with 25 and 40. Not amazing, but definitely something. They've got very low range though, and that may be the biggest problem we'll run into. They both only have a range of 200 at base and no room for yellow slots, not a lot of room to upgrade the range, so that may wind up being a problem later. For now though, we'll just deal with it and we'll see how it goes. As far as our main convoy vehicle, this sucker comes started out with a big rocket launcher on top, which we should, should hopefully be able to do a good amount of damage with. Nice area effect weapon with good armor and starting health. Hopefully it'll all work out for us and we'll be able to do some damage here. We're going to be playing on normal. The way this game works, it seems as though you need to unlock some of the more dangerous ships before you can really take on hard mode. So just to be safe, we'll be playing on normal today and hopefully we'll have a grand old adventure. So, let's get this party started. Here we go. Welcome to Convoy. After flying through an asteroid field, our spaceship was forced to make an emergency landing on the planet Omek Prime due to critical damage to its primary systems. The captain has ordered us to traverse the planet in search of replacement parts, and obtaining these will allow the spaceship to continue its mission. Alright. The captain wants us to collect the following parts and bring them to the spaceship. A flux capacitor, multicellulose infused ethanol, sonic screws, and self-stealing stem bolts. Omek Prime is a world filled with danger. Three factions vying for control of the planet being the privateers, the raiders, and the Torvac. And we'll just have to do our best. So, we have no questions. We're just going to jump straight into this sucker and see what we can figure out. So, we've played this before. You guys know the deal. We can click on our objectives over here to give us an indication of where we should go to find out more about them. Flux Capacitor, for example, is hidden by a local professor way off in this direction. Multicellulose infused ethanol is at the local chemist in an underground laboratory up to the north. What else do we have? Sonic screws are also to the north. Hmm, Torvac has them. Interesting. What about these self-sealing stem bolts? They're also hidden up to the north with Eiffels Incorporated. Well, that's unusual. Generally, you don't get all of your key items up in the top of the map, but I think what we're going to do right now is we're going to head off down this way and see if we can't find anything to get ourselves started. We want to find some easy combat early on, try and get some lucky breaks, get some nice resources so we can start upgrading and find things like these camps where we can find interesting upgrade items as well. Here we spot a wreck partly covered by sands. Let's investigate the wreck and see what we find. We find a flyer for the Lucky Peacock, the traveling casino. Since the casino travels around it can be hard to locate, but this flyer shows the latest coordinates. We'll add the coordinates to our map in case we want to go there later. Don't know if we will, but now we know at least. Let's go check out this camp and see what they have hidden away in here, so we know what to come back for later if there's anything good. Primarily though, we're looking for the shop where they offer... Hmm... Nothing too exciting. Leech drones and repair drones for your MCVs. And we also have a variety of basic weaponry. Okay, nothing too phenomenal in here. Good to know. We're looking for powerful MCV weapons like super heavy railguns and whatnot, because that's what we're really interested in. For now, though, we're just looking around for general uh, mission objectives and other shops we can go find. The radio signal here turns out to be a distress call. A KJL trading company caravan is being attacked by privateers and they're asking for help. The coordinates aren't too far from here, so there we go. We soon spot the skirmish. It turns out the caravan has already been destroyed, but the few remaining vehicles are busy fighting the privateers. Let's get in there and help! Alright, we have some debris on the battlefield already. Let's try and start dealing with these guys. Now, this may be a problem. We've got shields and all kinds of nastiness. 
you are a ramming vehicle, so it's your only primary method of combat, so you need to get right up next to them and so you can actually smash into them. What we should really be doing, though, is getting out of the way of this and making use of our rockets to really do some damage here. There we go. Hit them together. We're going to focus on one target at a time for now, since otherwise it'd be kind of difficult for us to really take these guys down. Ramming is especially effective against these shielded enemies, so we're going to make sure we use this against them. Unfortunately, we're taking a lot of additional damage by letting our enemies run into these mines. Our allies, rather, run into these mines. We want to try and avoid that if we can, but it might be a little bit difficult at this stage. Thankfully for us, there is a, a lot of debris coming up on the side here. If we can swing around fast enough, ram this guy to the wall. Oh, not quite killing him. But he is taking a good amount of damage pretty fast. Unfortunately, so are we. As we defeat the final Primateer vehicle, we return to the KJL Trading Company caravan, or what's left of it. We radio them and they thank us profusely. They regret to inform us that they're mostly transporting food cues. One of their combat vehicles offers to join our convoy. Well, that is fantastic, yes. The quicker we can get more people, the better. And they are KJL Pew Pew, apparently. Yeah, sure. About that. That's an awful name. <laughs> but hey, I won't say no to another vehicle in our convoy. That's fantastic this early. So, let's keep moving, see if we can't find a camp so we can see what these guys have equipped. For now, though, we're going to keep heading down to the south. Even though it's not actually where we want to be, it could be quite useful to us if we can find more shops like this one. Raiders emerge from hiding places along the highway and move in to engage us. Escaping seems unlucky and we'll have to fight. Well, let's do our best to fight. Hopefully Pew Pew's got some guns. Nope, Pew Pew is quite large, but doesn't appear to have anything equipped. Well, I guess Pew Pew's gonna be doing some ramming then, isn't he? Alright, well, at least he's in a good spot for ramming. Can I get in there before they do? No, but I can ram this guy. I got a chainsaw and everything. Wow, okay, that's some weird, some weird movement happening right there. I'm not entirely sure what the game was trying to do, but I am entirely sure I didn't like how it did it. Alright, let's get you up over here so you can start ramming this guy. We're gonna start ramming this guy into the corner, you're gonna start shooting him in the butt. Just as long as you don't take too much damage early, we should be fine here. The problem, though, is, like we mentioned, there, there's a big potential for our vehicles to take a lot of damage early on before we can afford to put any upgrades or anything in them. Okay, we got some ramming happening now, which is good. Unfortunately, the ramming is pretty painful for us, which is not great. But at least we're doing damage now. That's the important thing. Keep ramming there, boys. Alright, that's another one down. And one more ram here should finish them off. And then we just have to move in on this last enemy over here. So, let's move on up and start doing so. We've lost all of our armor on our main shooting vehicle, which is not great for us. We do have a lot of firepower there, but not if we're getting hit this hard. So let's shove these guys into the walls and try and hopefully get something better soon. Unfortunately, they're coming in with some nastiness, so we're just going to back up here and rocket this guy in the face. Don't want to go too close to that, really. And he's down. We took a lot of damage so far. We did find 11 fuel and 31 scrap. If we take the loot, then we can move on. Let's make our way over to this camp and see if maybe we don't die. There we go. Sit in the camp. Unfortunately, we are missing a weapon for this KJL vehicle. That is not great. It's got a base. Uh, base handling is decent, but not enough to give us any real evasion. Its armor is not bad. Its health, rather, is not bad. Its armor is pretty bad. This vehicle is just generally not amazing. Oh, it does have a weapon. It has a medium plasma blaster. Oh, I see it there now. Wow, I didn't even notice it firing. Hmm. Well, that's actually a, not a terrible weapon. Helps shred enemy armor, but it's going to be hard for us to uh, really excel with only one weapon slot on that vehicle. But it'll do for now. Gives us an extra body to fight with and generally should help. What do they have in the shop here? Here they have a medium beam laser. That's not a bad weapon, but there's nothing particularly phenomenal in here. So I'll buy a little bit of fuel. It's expensive, but we need some. We'll head back to base here, do a little bit of repairing too, so our vehicles don't inevitably die. There we go. Keep ourselves as alive as we possibly can afford. And you know what? We'll actually spend the rest of our resources on fuel here, because we're going to need some more. And it's time to head back out to the wastes and hopefully find some more interesting things out here. We need to get a little bit lucky at the start of this mission. We've already got a little bit lucky getting our third vehicle. It's not an amazing one, but it is a third one, which is a big deal. This urban area has been completely shot to hell. And it's the carnage we spot a bedraggled bunch of survivors. They look at our convoy with a mixture of hope and despair. We talk to them. 
they desperately beg for a hundred uh, parts so they can afford food cubes. Yeah, we don't have a hundred parts. They look crestfallen and thank us anyway and continue their miserable way. Believe me, if I had a hundred parts to just throw around, I would be happy to help you, but... That's a lot of resources you're asking for there, so casually. As we drive down the road, we see a car off to the side with a white flag hanging out the window. Now we investigate. We get closer and see the car is riddled with bullets and scorch marks. Whoever did this doesn't seem to be nearby now, and we managed to scrap the vehicle for 19 parts. Alright, we'll take them. What else do we have down here? Hopefully there's some goods. We want to try and find something interesting. There's one of the first actual beacons we've seen in a long time. There's a couple of them over here, so we might as well make our way over. We spot a non-functioning Torvac vehicle by the side of the road. Well, let's investigate the wreck. Another lucky peacock flyer. Not interested, thanks. Alright. The signal originates from a Torvac checkpoint. They're trying to radio our convoy. Hey, hello. Upon seizing opening our radio... What? Oh, words are hard. Upon opening your radio channels, we hear robotic sounding voice state, Identity confirmed. Move in to engage. The radio connection is cut out immediately afterwards. A pitch black obelisk emerges from within the checkpoint whilst several Torvac vehicles move out from within. The top of the obelisk seems to be pulsating with a deep red light. It seems ominous. Well, let's fight then. Let's do this thing. Okay, we have a bunch of vehicles here. We should be pretty well equipped. Let's just try and get them set up so we can deal with these incoming enemies. Oop! Got him for a nice solid hit right off the bat. We do have a weapon on there that I see now. I don't know why I missed it before. So this guy's gonna try and get in front of us. We're gonna try and stop that from happening. And meanwhile, we're just gonna harass these guys out of the way here. There we go. Keep him from getting in front of us, thank you very much. Ram him as well. Keep the target on him though. We wanna try and make sure we're giving these guys as much of a hard time as we possibly can. He did get in front of us though, so he wasn't paying attention to what we're doing. So that's not great. He's going to keep trying to do so. We're going to keep trying to harass his allies back here and keep the pressure on him with the big cannon. The big cannon is a pretty heavy, solid weapon, so it should be good enough to deal with this guy, even though he is going to try and keep getting in front of us to place mines in our faces. Okay, one more ram here. Should take this guy most of the way out. He's going to survive a little bit, but the gun should be enough to kill him. Swing over to the side here. Keep the pressure up here, and we should be fine. That damage is so low. I can't tell how much health he has. We're just going to ram him to be safe. It, it, it hurts, but I mean, it's better that than taking a more unnecessary damage. And we have a rocket ready, so we're just going to end him the old-fashioned way. With high explosives. Okay. Let's get our team ready for action here, because we've completed the mission. We've defeated the Torvac vehicles, getting 12 fuel and 35 parts. The checkpoint and its obelisk don't show any signs of life. We could try to approach it, although we're not sure if that obelisk will start firing. Well, you know what? Just to be uh, playing on the wild side here, let's investigate the base. We approach, and the obelisk remains dormant. Upon inspection of the checkpoint, we shut down the obelisk and all equipment and managed to recover an additional 18 parts. Well, I mean, that's not bad, but it's not a great reward either. Alright, open the map. Let's keep moving. We have another interesting looking checkpoint over here, although it's a little bit tricky to get to. And then we have a camp up to our north, which will help as well. A variety of Torvac vehicles are gathered here. It appears to be some sort of exposition. We investigate. We welcome you to the Torvac Weapon Exposition. We have many high-end weapons available for purchase. He doesn't sound like a robot, he just sounds like a bit of a, a jerk. Alright, we can expose him to our weapons and attack him. We can take a look at the weapons and maybe buy one, although they're going to be very expensive. Let's just fight them. We might be able to get a weapon out of this if we successfully win this battle, although it may be a challenging fight since we have since we are attacking a weapons exposition. But I guess we'll find out. So, first target that guy, you're gonna ram him right off the bat. We're gonna try and get right through here, so we have people, what are you doing? Back up to there and hit him in the head. There you go. We're gonna keep the pressure up here if we can. We have a perfect rocket right here. Accidentally hit ourselves with that a little bit, but you know what? No harm done. And by no harm done, I mean, of course, harm is done, but we're gonna try and ignore that and just keep hammering home our attacks. Keep these guys harassed as best as we can. There we go. Keep the ramming up, because the ramming helps speed things up significantly, so we should hopefully overall take less damage if we keep the ramming going well. There we go. Our vehicles are taking a lot of damage, though, since we don't have real firepower yet, and that is definitely a problem. 
One more ram should do it though, and we get out of the way to our right. Eh, it didn't quite get out of the way in time, I don't think, but we found 15 fuel and 40 parts, as well as a light rocket artillery. Awesome, that's a nice find. That should beef us up significantly once we get back to the camp. So, let's make our way down this way to said camp, and we should be able to make use of the gear we've found and the money we've found to hopefully be a little bit harder to kill. Let's get in here. There we go. Make camp, and what do we find? First of all, we need to equip those rockets. Let's equip them on our non-ramming vehicle so it's a little bit more effective. I think that's probably a pretty solid idea. We're going to want to buy some upgrades soon if we can afford them. I have a feeling we need to spend our money on repairs instead. Our KJL vehicle is mostly maxed out on parts anyway. Just basically about ramming and armor reduction at the moment. Alright, well let's do some repairs here so we don't uh, suffer too badly. There we go, that'll do for now. Leaves us with 83 parts to spend. Do they have anything in their shop here? Oh, they have a whole other vehicle. Oh, and a super heavy laser. That is a fun weapon. We need 160 parts to come back and get that thing, though. Ooh, that would be nice. This looks like a really nice ship, too, with two yellow slots and two red slots. Put some good stuff on that thing. Alright, so this is a good shop. We'll probably want to come back here later once we have resources. It also can drop EMP mines, which are pretty solid as well. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Okay, well we'll have to come back to this shop then, because things at the shops like these generally stay forever. Okay, I do want to grab some mine guard for our main convoy vehicle, so things ramming into it don't cause us problems forever. We can't put any handling or range in it, surprise surprise, since it doesn't have any of those abilities to move anyway. And its range is infinite, so we'll just confirm those purchases. And in the meantime, we're going to skip over to our other vehicles, and we're going to buff them up a little bit too. We're going to put uh, health, I guess, is probably the best thing on this vehicle. Mine Guard's actually probably a pretty good idea on the ramming vehicle, because it is going to be taking a lot of damage to the face from things exploding into it, so we might as well toughen it up a little bit that way. And we'll also put on a range upgrade on our gunship, so it actually has some range, so it makes it a little bit more effective. There we go, we're pretty much out of cash now, so we will buy ourselves a bit of fuel so we don't run out. And that's all we can afford. We'll have to come back here later, but for now, that's it. Let's go investigate some more of these signs. Oh, okay. Several raider vehicles are approaching our convoy. Their presumed leader taunts us on the radio by exclaiming, I'm gonna destroy you. Well, let's ready those weapons and take them down. Oh, there he goes. What do you know? See? We knew what he was gonna say before he did. Okay, let's shoot these guys and get our team over there to deal with them. We have a whole lot of ramming to do, so let's get ready for it. Alright, this looks perfect. Missile them in the face. Get some bodies in here, start the ramming. Excuse me, I'm ramming you right now. This is not a time for you to get out of the way, this is a time for you to get rammed in the face. Alright, so, engage the bullying. Perfect. Chase this guy down a little bit so he can't get out of the way. Keep ramming these guys as much as possible. Unfortunately, our weapons do kind of suck, especially on this guy. The, uh, the chainsaw that we're using isn't terrible, but the fact that we can't, uh, can't do enough damage really with our other vehicles yet is a bit of a problem, but hopefully we'll be able to recover that issue later. There we go, that's another one. We just lost all of our armor on this guy from the ramming that he's been doing. A bit of a problem. That one's still alive, unfortunately, but we should hopefully be able to deal with that very shortly. We've taken a ton of damage in a very short amount of time here. This is definitely not ideal. But such is the way of things. Sometimes that's just how it goes. Let's make sure our vehicle doesn't hit anything and die, and we find 9 fuel, 35 parts, and it's another light rocket artillery. Okay, well, we'll take it. We'll equip that right now, in fact, while we're still sitting on the camp. Definitely hurt, but we should be able to recover now. Okay, so... We have another weapon slot on this vehicle, so we'll stick on some rockets in there, so it can at least hit things when it's waiting to recharge its ramming. And we'll return. We have to do a bunch of repairs, though, so let's start that again. There goes all the money we just made, but... Such is the price of staying alive. Alright, leave the camp and let's keep moving. We've got a long way to travel today, and hopefully we'll be able to find some good stuff out here on the road. 
We come across a raider slave convoy. They're heavily armed, but appear more interested in continuing on their way. Well, let's, uh... Let's fight them. Why not? We're in a murderous mood here today. We're raiders too, aren't we? It's only appropriate that we're going out for blood. Okay, we got two raiders on that side. We're gonna deal with this guy, hopefully by firing on him. He does have a laser on his, uh, his vehicle, which is not good. We want these guys to clump up a little bit now before we hit them with the rocket, if it's at all possible. Because that would make things much nicer. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but we'll see. Alright, we're hitting rockets. Actually, this is perfect. They're lining up nicely for a nice rocket to the face. There we go. Start ramming these guys. Get them out of the way. Keep the pressure up down to the bottom of the map. This guy's going to die, I think, one more ram. He's not looking too happy at the moment. Keep the pressure up on this armorless guy, and keep the murder happening down here at the bottom. Looks like he just barely survived that one, unfortunately. But we can deal with it. We're almost killing this guy at the top, so now we can bring our team over here to push in more firepower. We do take a whole lot of damage in combat, though, don't we? Okay, let's move you up and keep the pressure here. Move your ally up to here instead, and ram with the ramming vehicle. And down he goes. Fantastic. Okay. That was pretty solid. Let's get our vehicles back into position. We find some loot in the wrecks, getting 9 fuel and 27 parts. Sadly, all the slaves were killed during combat. Ah oh, well. Let's let our team rearrange a little bit here. We're very low on health and armor, as always, with this setup. But we're going to open the map and keep going. Alright. Alright. We have another event happening over here on the right-hand side, so let's make our way over there and see what's happening at this area. A trading post has been built in this stretch of desert. It supports the signs of the KJL Trading Company. They appear to have hired several well-equipped privateer vehicles for protection. Let's radio them. Greetings! Welcome to the KJL Trading Hub. What can we do for you? Well, let's inquire after a job. We do, in fact, require some assistance. As of late, several of our caravans have come under more attack than usual. It appears your arrival has motivated the Raiders Privateer and Torvac to adopt a more aggressive posture. Whilst we're waiting for the Keepers to clean up the mess, we've decided to take matters in our own hands, which is where you come in. So we can say Keepers here. That's interesting. You can actually learn about the boss beforehand. Their mothership arrived on the planet roughly 80 hours ago. You should have seen it. It was quite a sight to behold. It supports some impressive weaponry systems and has two shield generators. On top of that, it hovers. Around that time, Torvac had shown their true colors and on the brink of wiping out the two major factions, but the Keepers claimed a delicate balance had to be preserved and started destroying entire checkpoints with ease. After some time, they must have been satisfied and they disappeared, leaving the three factions on equal footing. Considering the aggression of the late, it's only a matter of time before they appear again. That's weird. Tell me the mothership. What would you like to know? What kind of weapons do they have? From what we've seen, it has some impressive laser systems at the front of Missile Hub at its center, which could lay waste to whole areas at once in a mine layer with a seemingly endless supply. At one point, Torvac had managed to do some serious damage to it, at which point a previously unhidden... What? A previously hidden weapon segment revealed itself and wiped them all out in seconds. It's pretty impressive. What's up about that job? We have devised a new special vehicle to help us deal with the threat. Sadly, some of the special parts required in its construction have been sent here rather than to the actual production facility. With our regular trading routes, we can't spare any vehicles to transport them to the proper location. If you'd be so kind to deliver them, we'd be very grateful. We'll send word to the facility upon arrival you could either choose to receive a KJL fighter or a sizable amount of parts. Naturally, we'll include some fewer for your troubles. That sounds pretty sweet to me. Alright, well, sounds good. Great, best of luck. We load up the special parts in our convoy and prepare to head out. A quick inspection of the parts shows them to be useless to, our, to us in our current state. So we can't just steal them, is what they're saying. On the other hand, the KJL delivery is right beside us, so I guess we head over this way again. And deliver those parts. That was a really easy job. Raider vehicles are trailing our convoy with their weapons ready. Their leader mocks us in the radio by declaring, Soon as I stepped on the scene, I'm hearing Hoche screaming. Don't know what that means, but we're gonna fight him. Here we go. Alrighty, friends. Time to do battle. Alright, we should be able to do a good amount of damage to these guys pretty fast, but we are, of course, risking taking a billion damage in this combat, as always, because we just are not geared up for really surviving a long time here. We take far too much damage in combat. I want one of these guys to move in closer so we can follow up with some more heavy hits. There we go, that's exactly what I wanted. 
We're gonna follow up with a rocket right here and move up here to stop him from getting out of the way. Fantastic, that's a little bit of extra damage at the very least. Start ramming, we gotta do as much damage as we can here and we're not gonna have a whole lot of other options. Hopefully this extra vehicle we're gonna get is going to mitigate our inability to do damage without seriously injuring ourselves in the process. But uh, there's not really an easy way for us to tell yet. We're just gonna have to do it and see what happens. Continue the ramming. But see, our our uh, our KJL vehicle, which we still have forgotten to rename, is not doing too well. Not doing too well at all. It's taking a lot of damage. In fact, it's potentially even taking damage faster than they are, almost. Not quite. Definitely very close to. Alright, well, we've kept it alive at the very least. Looks like it'll live through this battle, although maybe not if we just take laser beams to the face like that. Please kill this guy so we don't have to deal with it. Alright, and out of the way. Man, that was not a good battle for us. We need some more weaponry. Find 11 fuel and 38 parts, and we'll take it quite happily, thank you very much. Alright, we really need to be able to go back to that camp in a minute so we can repair our vehicles, otherwise we are going to lose them. Alright, we arrive at the KJL production facility and are swiftly contacted on our radio. Now let's respond. We've been anticipating your arrival. Thank you for kindly delivering these parts for us. Soon we shall be able to construct additional KGL fighters and our caravans will remain safe and sound. What do you desire as a reward? A vehicle or 101 parts? 101 parts is nice, but we want a fourth vehicle. That can be arranged. We trust the KJL fighter should keep you safe to the best of its abilities. We currently construct them with one of four starting weapons. Which one has our preference? Ooh. Ooh, minigun, auto cannon, beam laser, or railgun. All of those are good. I think we're gonna take a minigun car, though. Seems like a good idea. Additionally, uh, we'll reward you some fuel to make up for what you spent getting here. We believe 24 should be sufficient. Well, that's pretty solid. That should conclude our business. Thanks again for your assistance. Good luck in your future endeavors. That event is pretty solid. That's a good looking vehicle. Alright, let's get back to that camp, please, before we die. Camp. Okay, thank goodness. No death for us today. But we have another identical... Oh, single slot. Oh, KJL fighter. Well, I was kind of hoping it would be a different vehicle, rather than an identical one, just with a better weapon. But at least, to be fair, the minigun is a pretty solid weapon. Compared to the medium plasma blaster, which is a pretty bad weapon, in general. It just doesn't have enough firepower to make up for how slow it, uh... It does anything. Alright, so let's get some repairs done. Spend all our hard-earned loot. But at least we have four vehicles now, so that should make things a little bit easier for us. Hopefully. Let's rename these suckers, though. You are going to be renamed from KJL Pew Pew. You are going to be renamed to Tsunami. There we go. And what else are we going to name here? We have now an earthquake, a hurricane, a tsunami, and you are going to be a, hmm, you're going to be thunderstorm. There you go. Not quite as calamitous as the other ones, but still pretty dangerous if you're out in the middle of nowhere in it. And let's go. So, we've got a whole variety of natural horrors here. Not the most effective team yet, but we'll keep moving around and see what we can do. Very low in resources, but pretty high in fuel, thankfully. Seems we've driven straight into a sandstorm. A severe risk of losing contact with one of our vehicles. Well, thankfully we have enough fuel that we can wait it out, so we don't have to risk just automatically losing a vehicle, so we'll do this. Eventually the storm passes and manage to recover contact with our vehicles. I don't know why waiting costs 10 fuel, but whatever. A flashy display of neon lights and laser shows can be seen in the distance. Let's investigate. Upon coming closer, we see, we see that a neon sign reads, Selvin's Show of Surprises! We see a large podium with three doors numbered one to three. A woman wearing a glittery suit and a fancy top hat is stood behind a mic on top of the podium. Next to the podium, we see two big turrets sporting impressive looking weaponry. We suspect they could destroy our entire convoy with a single burst. The woman announces, Ladies and gentlemen, please give a hand to our latest contenders! Due to the lack of audience, it remains silent. Alright, well, let's step right up then. The woman continues, 
Wonderful! Welcome to Selvin's Show of Surprises. I'm your host, Marilyn. You can compete for a mere 50 parts. Behind one of these three doors is a spread spanking new Keeper drone ready to join you on your adventures, but behind the other two doors are goats. What say you? Are you ready to make a deal? I mean, if this is the this is the classic three door challenge, which means you pick a door and you always switch doors. But uh, because the first door you pick has a one in three chance of being right, but the second door you pick is always a fifty percent chance of being right. So just on the basic numbers, you always change doors. But we don't have the fifty parts, so we can't do it. So no, goodbye. That sucks. That sucks indeed. Since we spent all of our resources keeping ourselves alive, we don't get to take advantage of this. In the distance, we see a vehicle parked by the side of the road. There's someone standing next to it. Let's stop and see what the problem is. It appears the vehicle's broken down and needs some spare parts to get it running again. Well, we could help them with repairs and spend 30 parts, but we don't have 30 parts. We could be nice and say we can't do it, or we can just murder them. Today, I think we're going to be the raiders that we look like we are. And, I mean, traitors, but whatever. Murder them. We find a 100mm cannon. Oh, baby. That is a nice find. That is a good weapon. Okay. Well, that worked out for us. Alright, guys. So, let's head up this road a little bit more. We're just about time to end this episode. Let's see what's going on here, though. It looks like an old abandoned service station has left its advertising signal on repeat. That, or it's an ambush. Considering this planet, the latter is probably true. Let's check it out. Upon approaching the service station, we don't seem to spot any approaching vehicles, nor hear any gunfire. Looks like it really is just an abandoned fuel station. Upon closer inspection, we find it's got nine fuel left behind as well. Great. All right, well, we're going to have to end this episode here for now. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, coming back to a bit of Convoy here for you. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, let me know about it in the comments below. Thank you again very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye